we have one goal. We will devalue the currency and that will make asset prices rise and people will feel wealthier and they'll, they'll engage more. And so prices go up, but they're not going up in real terms. They're going up in nominal terms. Here's a crazy stat. Stocks. Everyone says they're at new all-time highs, right? No, they're not. No. present video, Mark Yusko shares his new expectation for bid organizations, including Bitcoin, in their financial statements. He additionally shares his expectation for Bitcoin in the following a year. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. So without burning through any time, we should jump into the video. Abe San came in and said, we have one goal. We will devalue the currency and that will make asset prices rise and people will feel wealthier and they'll, they'll engage more. And so prices go up, but they're not going up in real terms. They're going up in nominal terms. Here's a crazy stat. Stocks. Everyone says they're at new all-time highs, right? No, they're not. No. Yeah, not, not real in value. Paper. Yeah. In gold, they're the same price as 1996. Wow. Really? Yeah. 1996. Same price when you price in gold. Huh. Because gold for 5,000 years has been the only money Money is an asset that exists in the absence of a liability. Everything that we think of as money is currency. Currency is backed by debt. It sits on top of gold. Gold sits in the central bank vaults, and then we build money on top of it through debt. Currency, I'm sorry, currency. And so gold for 5,000 years, a single ounce, right, has bought a fine person suit from Cleopatra's time to a suit of armor, to a zoot suit in the 20s, to Savile Row today, you exchange one, coin and you get a fine person suit. The problem with gold is it's not very divisible and it's not very portable. Like if I had a bar, which I don't have one handy, but if You're I did- You're not Bob Menendez? Break... You don't have gold bars in your closet like Bob Menendez? <laughs> well, I, I gold do, but I'm not going to show you where on, uh, online. I don't well, it's hollowed where. books behind you. Every one of those books <laughs> yeah, has yeah, a, yeah, a bar exactly. shaped hole cut bars. out of the pages. And But okay, so I, I grab a gold bar and I'm going to break it into three pieces. Now look, I'm not strong enough to do that. So even if I could do it, yep. I couldn't stuff it in the computer and send you each a third of the bar. But I can send you Bitcoin instantaneously because Bitcoin is more divisible and more portable. And, and the reason I am hashtag 2.1 quadrillion is there are 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis mm -hmm. in the world, or there will be when we're, we're at the end in 2140. And that's each... Bitcoin divisible to 100 million units. And I long for the day when we no longer talk about the price of Bitcoin, right? I mean, I have the buy Bitcoin sign back there. Yeah, our chat loves love that thing. Uh, the is, that the one, is that the one that was behind Janet Yellen? No, no, no here's it. That is, that is an original. I got it from Christian. It is signed. It is numbered. Oh, wow. But I tried to buy the original <laughs> and he said, yeah, okay, but I really think it should be in a museum. Like, oh, wow. it, it will be. That It'll makes be in sense. My museum, the Yusko Museum. Oh. Oh, and okay. he, he declined. And so, he, but he did make me that and, and gave it to me, or it didn't give it to me. I bought it from him. And, um, but now it comes out this morning uh, that he is going to auction the the original. So I, I will be at the auction, but my guess is I will lose to someone with with more money than, than you, I have. You know, Uncovering from coin shares highlighted seven days by week, $435 million overflow from computerized cash interests. In the week that finished April 26th, crypto exchange traded things. Edips have now experienced out streams for the third progressive week as Bitcoin cost remains range bound in the low $60,000 domain. Bitcoin funds drove out 423 million bucks, leave the market following an occasion, while Ether hypothesis things too experienced 38 million 
million in withdrawals, meaning their seventh progressive seven-day stretch of negative stream Solana and Litecoin ETPs experience stores posting net inflows of $4.1 million and $3.1 million as per coin shares. Separately, the negative floods are sensible because of deceleration in inflows from new underwriters, which saw just $126 million in inflows contrasted with $254 million last week. The earlier week's information from the side monetary patrons uncovers that Dullstone's Bitcoin ETF iBit recorded no streams for the underlying time last week. Different sponsor have experienced different extensive stretches of no inflows all through ongoing weeks amidst decelerating floods from Grayscale's GBTC. The negative floods are plausible. A delayed consequence of monetary supporters' stresses over U.S. stack expansion is a blend of more slow pace of financial development and tacky extension for the crippling the probability of taking care of rate cuts. The CME took care of watch device states. Sellers are setting the possibilities of a June rate cut at only 11.3% at the hour of creating versus 44.8% for September and 43.8% for November. This suggests market specialists are placing your confidence in the U.S. central bank hold rate steady in May and June with the primary possible cut being later in the year. I, I have fun with the maxis because I'll go into a, a Bitcoin maxi space and they're like, get out of here, you shit coiner. I'm like, what are you talking about? I have more Bitcoin than you. And that's not a brag. <laughs> it's just, it's just real. And and that's just luck, right? I'm not, I'm, again, it's not a brag. It's just, it's just, don't call me just because I am a technology maximalist. And so, yes, I own Ethereum. I was an early investor in Solana, not because I'm smart, but because Kyle was smart and we invested with Kyle. And look, I made a lot of money in Solana. Now, Solana, I got in real trouble because, you know, about a year ago I was on a show and, and I was, they said, well, what'd you do with your Solana bag? I said, well, I sold most of it. And I'm like, well, why? I'm like, well, cause we made like 2000 times our money, but, but <laughs> I sold because it was breaking, right? I said, transactions yeah. were vaporizing. And the community went batshit crazy. They were like, yeah, yeah we, we never roll back the chain. I said, I never said you roll back the chain. What I said was transactions go out, the network's congested, and they don't settle. And, and unless no, I'm watching it, that. resubmit it, well, now 75% last weekend. So, so anyway, so this, this guy reached out to me and he said, we fixed it. I'm like, all right, show me. So he walked me through and we set up a phantom wallet and he, he actually bought me markusco.sol and, and he sent me some, you know, he sent me $10 on, on, and look, the phantom experience sending USDC far superior than, yep. than any of the other ones I've looked at. Fine, fine, way better, but it was cheap, it was fast. But here's the thing, if 75% of transactions don't settle because the network's congested, we got a problem. and. So I, I like things that work and I like, I, and here, well, the bottom line is to answer your question, are maxis, Bitcoin maxis, going to ape into ordinals and runes? Now, a few, myself included, because I actually consider myself a Bitcoin maxi, although the true maxis would say, oh, no, you're not. Like, I own some ordinals, I own some runes, and I'm pretty excited about, you know, the runes launch um, coming up. So I, I own pre-runes. I don't own runes yet. I own pre-runes. But I'm pretty excited about what, what's going on there because inscriptions enable higher transaction fees, which means the miners get compensated and the network's more secure. So I like that. But I don't, I don't think the true maxis, like the real hardcore, you know, you can pry the Bitcoin out of my cold, dead hands. Well, here's the problem with that. I ask these people all the time, how much money do you have in the bank? Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, how much money do you have in the bank? Well, that's not the same. I'm like, yeah, it is. Because it's not your money, right? You live in a world where you still need to spend in fiat, right? You can't buy coffee. I mean, you can buy coffee in a few places with Bitcoin. But bottom line is, most of what we do is in, can't pay your taxes. You got... Yeah, gotta, we're not immortal vampires. We have to, you know, we have bills and, you know, food live. and shelter. And yeah. What, what people miss, now I still understand why it's so hard. Bitcoin is the best savings technology 
that's ever been invented. Full stop. It's money that doesn't devalue. It actually is deflationary instead of inflationary. And so it's the best save. Now, now when do you spend your savings? Not never. Not never. You spend it when you have a big expense, right? You want to buy a house. You want to send your kids to college. You want to take a vacation. So this, you know, this whale that bought it at, I think it was like 70 cents or something. No, 50 cents. And he held it all the way to 70,000 and sold a thousand. It was like, oh my God, you know, it doesn't have diamond hands. Like, what are you talking about? At some point, you need to replenish. The way you have to think about it is three buckets, right? We all have a liquidity bucket. 10 to 15% of our wealth that we need to spend for our lifestyle. Then we have a get rich bucket, right? 10 to 15%. That's for all the crazy ideas. You know, the brother-in-law's condo deal, the the hot (laughs) stock tip you got from your friend. You're going to lose all that. So just keep it small, but that's fine. (laughs) And then you have your savings bucket and that's 70 to 80% of your wealth. And, And the boomer approach is... 60-40, 70-30, 60-40, 70-30, diversified portfolio, stocks and bonds. Well, now this incredible asset, digital assets has come along and now you can diversify into those things. And you could even say, well, with Bitcoin, I could just, I could swap that whole portfolio into Bitcoin. Fine. You want to do that? That's fine. That, that could be your savings. But here's the thing, that 10 to 15% in your liquidity bucket, there's a hole in the bottom. It's going to drain. So you got to keep replenishing yeah, to look at it. And as the Bitcoin keeps to appreciating, can remember Bitcoin doesn't grow. It's the currency that's getting worse mm-hmm. or the demand is rising, right? Supply and demand. And I don't see why that's so hard. And I don't see why people look at it as a negative. If you take some of your savings, Specialists at lender firm Bernstein expressed that the spot lull Bitcoin ETF inflows isn't the beginning of a negative example anyway, is a current second stop before BTC proceeds with its bull run in a note to clients. Bernstein analysts Gautam Chugani and Makicha Sapra wrote in a report, We don't expect the Bitcoin ETF. Dialing back is a disturbing pattern, however, acknowledge it is a fleeting postponement beforehand. ETF become more consolidated with private bank stages, overflow guides, and surprisingly more lender organizes the examiners focused on their $150,000 cycle concentration for the Bitcoin cost toward 2025. Referring to end wonderful ETF demand, which has seen 122 billion of spot Bitcoin ETF net inflows since their market debut on January 11th, a pristine eco and measurements report demands that its perusers watch out for an adjustment of the monetary conditions that could address the decision time, the Bitcoin positively trending market. The report gets a handle on that while spot Bitcoin ETF opened up one more wellspring of premium turning full scale breezes in the failure of the US National Bank to control development could burden the buyer market that might bring about a fixing of the money related condition. What's more, this would make a headwind for the Bitcoin measurements show a positively trending market. The National Bank of Chicago's public money related conditions record NFCI which gauges the level of coziness in the monetary framework in the US is slowing down and is at a comparable level it was in 2022 when the rate started moving as the graph the NFCI is slowing down as displayed previously is a likely explanation for why risk assets for instance Bitcoin are negative econometrics figured out in case it just stays at that then we are essentially experiencing a reprieve in the decidedly moving business sector yet if this is a turn in the money related conditions the emphatically moving business area could be in a predicament there is a normal positive impulse multi-week from this point as the HQBDC and assess season of appearance spot ETF begin trading revenue is filling in what could act as an inflow passage of Asian institutional capital QCP made in an email sent over the course of the end of the week 